My name's Jordan Young. I'm a track and field thrower from Canada. For over a decade, I've been working to understand every aspect of throwing. I'm an athlete, which means the only way to be great is through raw hard work and determination. This is my story. I'm going to be taking on one of athletics' biggest challenges, the Olympic Games. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of JY Throws. It's been a few weeks since my last upload, and in that time, I've had some of my favorite technical practices. So in today's video, I want to explain to you guys some cues that I've been thinking about that have been really helping change my technique, as well as explain to you guys some other training updates that I've got going on in my life. And we've got a lot to cover, so I want to jump right into things today. So if you guys enjoy this video along the way or find yourself learning something, if you can, hit that like button so we can get it out to as many throwers as possible and subscribe for more videos like this. Let's get into it. The first update I wanted to give you guys is on my injuries. And since the beginning of the season, I've had a shoulder injury. So a couple weeks ago, I began taking boxing lessons to encourage me to get my shoulder moving to help strengthen the muscles and tendons. So hopefully soon I can pick up the shot put again. And I'm just trying to do simple things like while I'm climbing stairs, I've been messing around with some shadow boxing. And the more that I've been moving my shoulder, the better it's been feeling. So it's something that I want to continue to do and hopefully it'll benefit my shot put later on in the year. And the next update I wanted to give you guys is on my strength. And we're just wrapping up the third week of this lifting cycle. And it's the exact same program as last time. I'll put that on the screen now. And the only difference in this cycle is that we changed the reps for the power lifts to be seven, six, five, five. So anyway, now that we're three weeks into this lifting program, things have been feeling good and I'm getting stronger in every lift. So I'm just going to continue to try to build my strength in the background and make sure that I'm pushing myself every day in the weight room so that later in the season when it's time to peak, I'll get the nice boost in my nervous system that I need. And the best way to get that is by making sure that you're hitting the weights hard in the winter. So I just got to keep it up. And the other training update that I wanted to give you guys is that we began throwing the heavy discus. And right now I'm throwing the 2.25k discus. And I actually want to send it over to my coach, Martin, and have him explain why and when we throw the heavy discus. Why well, throw heavy discus? Uh, it's a very good specific strength exercise, right? Uh, so you use muscle same as you would obviously throwing the uh, 2k, but all the more effect you have uh, because it's heavier discus, right? So you have to work harder. And the only time we would use heavy discus would be this time of year. So fall, maybe early spring, a little bit in spring from my experience. Now you will see some people throw during the whole year, especially women. I know Sandra throws a whole year. She will throw a 3K putts uh, day before a big meet. So it affects different people uh, differently. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, uh, but like I say, it's a very, gr it's a great specific exercise. Uh, some use it to, uh, as an equalizer of technique, right? So if you can't throw a heavy discus right, uh, it's unlikely that you can throw uh, the light one, right? In some people's opinion, uh, that's, a, that's a little bit of debatable. But like I said, the main thing is specific uh, exercise because uh, that's uh, what you do with a normal implement, right? For high school kids, uh, Jordan uh, was mentioning that, I'm not sure if it's beneficial because of technical skills, right? Somebody like Jordan who has you know, a decade of experience and decade of injuries, right? <laughs> but uh, has so many throws under his belt, he can handle that. And he's strong enough for 2.2, 2.5. Some people even throw 3K. Esan Haddadi uh, famously threw 56 meters with 3K. That's, so that's far, insane. Yeah. So it's, like I said, it's a great specific exercise. If you're technically sound, definitely throw. If you're not, uh, we would recommend throwing technically first, right? Getting your technique down and then uh, then moving up to heavier implements. And with that being said, it's time to move on to my discus technique. And over the past couple weeks, there's three main cues that I've been working on changing that I want to explain to you guys. The first position that I'm working on is my timing on the finish. And I actually felt this for the first time two weeks ago during a practice with Martin. And I just tried to be a little bit more patient on the ground, really trying to make sure that I keep this foot on the ground until I finish the discus. And in doing that, it changed my timing up enough that the disc is snapped out of my hand and I felt a lot of direction on the finish. Yes, that! So those two were completely different. Yeah. So after that throw, I've been slowly trying to incorporate it into more and more throws. And I just need to be really consciously thinking about that position. I'm really trying to make sure that I'm keeping my left foot on the ground in the middle until the discus comes out of my hand. 
trying to finish nice and tall. And when I do that, I've been getting some good throws that feel like they snap out and all of my power feels like it's transferring into the finish nice and straight. Yes! yes. Exactly! And it's such a subtle change of timing within a fraction of a second, but that fraction of a second I can feel such a big power difference. And it's just a matter of making sure I'm in a good position on the finish so I can add to it. And what I tend to feel on a lot of throws on the finish is that my hips are finishing and I'm pulling off to the side and the discus is going a different direction. So that subtle bit of timing and waiting for everything to line up and go straight just helped all the power connect. So the second position that I've been working on is kind of difficult to explain, but I'm gonna to try to do my best and break down what I've always felt in discus versus what I started to feel last week. So as I wind back in discus, because I'm trying to keep my center of mass balanced in the middle of my body, it feels like my rotational axis is nice and centered. So I wind back and it feels like the rotational axis is right in the middle, which it is, but eventually I need to get my rotational axis over top of my right side. And I've always thought about having to shift back over that right side. But for the first time, what I started to feel last week was that as I wind back, even though it feels like my rotational axis is here, I started to visualize my rotational axis being over top of my right foot. So I'm winding back and I can really visualize almost a straight pole going through my foot that I need to rotate back around. And that visual just helped me be much more consistent stay nice and rotational, accelerate the discus nice and consistently, and I've been really liking some of the things that it's doing. So winding back, feel that pull, reach wide, rotational, trying to get down to the middle. And the third position that I've been working on over the past couple of weeks is trying to get more orbit on the discus. And I've been doing that by trying to mimic Gerd Cantor's technique. I'll pull up a video of him now, and you can see that as he drives to the middle, he's getting the discus up really high. And what I've been trying to do to mimic his technique is staying nice and rotational low to the back, but as I'm extending my leg to the middle, I'm using that vertical energy to help send the discus up a bit higher. And that's been helping get a higher orbit. I've been feeling some good things, getting taller throws. Anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap this video up here. I'm super pleased with the direction that my technique's going right now. And these three positions are what I'm going to be continuing to work on over the next thousands of throws to continue to try to lock it into my muscle memory. But thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like. And if you really enjoyed it, subscribe for more. I will see you guys in the next one. Yes! Yeah. Exactly!